I'd like to do a problem with the macroscopic energy balance. This is one of the tougher topics in fluid mechanics. The problem I'd like to do is this one. Water discharges from a nozzle and travels horizontally, hitting a flat wall inclined 45 degrees to the vertical. The nozzle has a diameter of 12 millimeters and the water velocity is given. You may assume the sliding friction between the fluid and the wall is negligible. Calculate the vector force on the wall and the amount of fluid splitting in each direction along the plate. So I've sketched the problem here and I have some sort of a mass flow rate of fluid entering here and exiting in two different locations, one and two and three. So our problem now is to calculate that split and to calculate the force on the wall, which is a vector in some way in this direction, maybe a little down, maybe a little up, we're not really sure at this moment. So when encountering a difficult problem like this, we should really start at the beginning. And the simplest physics that we want to apply is the mass balance. So the mass balance for this problem is that M1 fluid comes in and M2 plus M3 fluid come out. That's going to be helpful to us. The next perhaps more complex fluid that we could apply to this would be the mechanical energy balance. Now actually the mechanical energy balance is limited to single input, single output systems and this system has one input and two outs. Normally we use the mechanical energy balance though to find things like pressures and velocities. But actually we can get some interesting information from the mechanical energy balance from this equation if we consider streamlines that enter one location and exit one location. So a streamline, for instance, that enters here across boundary 1 and exits across boundary 2 can tell us something about the velocity itself. So I'm just going to sketch such a, a streamline. Here's point 1 and here's point 2. And uh, this is a single input, single output system with no temperature, no phase change, no reaction. And we're going to now apply the mechanical energy balance and see what we can learn. So delta P over rho plus delta V squared over 2 alpha plus G delta Z plus the friction is equal to the work shaft on over the mass flow rate. So we don't have any shaft, so we have no shaft work. And we're going to neglect gravity throughout this problem because it's not really driving anything that's going on. If we can further neglect the friction along this streamline, we can get a simple relationship between the pressure and the velocity. Now the friction on this streamline might be generated by the rearrangement of this velocity profile, but we're going to take the assumption that friction can be neg neg neglected. Now we actually know something else about the pressure. This is air out here at atmospheric pressure. And so the pressure is the same all along this flow. So if in addition to all these other assumptions the pressure is the same, we find out that V2 minus V1 must be zero or V1 equals V2. It's kind of an interesting result and we can look back and see how we got it. We wrote the mechanical energy balance on a streamline that uh, went from the inlet to one particular outlet. There's no shaft work, there's no friction, gravity's neglected, pressure in a free stream is constant and so we find that the velocity must be constant. We can write a similar mechanical energy balance along a streamline that goes from 1 to 3 and the conclusion will be that V1 is equal to V3. So we end up with the conclusion that the velocity is constant. So we have two facts so far, this mass balance and the fact that the velocity is constant. And the remaining physics we can apply to the situation is that momentum is conserved. 
So this is 